Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the fantastic pleasure to introduce you to Buttersynth, an amazing six hybrid engine synth. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. And also, please do check the uh, instruction in the video description if you would like to participate in the giveaway. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's kick off an introduction and overview to Buttersynth. So let's click on the init here and it will ask us to initialize the preset, which we click in it. So as I just mentioned, you have a number of oscillators here. You have two way tables, really nice. You have a sample player, you have FM, a granulator, and also you have a noise generator as well. As you can see, when I, I click here, it says Wavetable 1, and you have controls in the middle of the screen, similar for uh, uh, Wavetable 2. Here you have your sample player, the FM, which you have four operators, and then you have your granulators, which is really, really nice. Let's start with the granulator. And first of all, you need to activate it, you see, with these buttons here. And you can activate multiple ones, only one, so you have... Um, lot of choice. You click browse here and it comes with some fantastic uh, preset sound which is really really nice. So let's select only one and let's play. As you can see here, you can create, select the start to play the grains, the end. You also have randomization between start and end. You can refine by octave, semi, tones, and fine in cents. You can, for example, um, uh, adjust the frequency or density. Randomization of volume. And grains length. And you can have them adjust to pitch based on the key you select. You can design the pan and the final volume. One of the things that uh, to notice is uh, on butter synth that it doesn't have a mix of you. So every time you select a different oscillator, you have on the bottom right a volume uh, dial here, which you need to adjust. Let's select the FM now engine and let's turn it on. You can see four operators here. You can click where it says sign here and you can choose different type of uh, waveforms from factory library, user library. You can also open files from your own device. You have categories here and of course preset. You adjust here the algorithm and you have 12. And then here you have the select of the filters you can you can have two filters you can select the first filter the second filter when they are both selected like that and this s button is off they are in parallels when it, this s button is on they are in serial mode which is really nice you can find the filters down here so really straightforward here you can adjust the ratio and if you change this button um if you turn these um i check uh, 
this control down, it will move the feedback. You can adjust the, the feedback to each operator. Really, really nice. And of course, adjust the ratio. And then you can adjust the depth for each operator. And then adjust octave, pan, volume, fine incense, and then semitones. One of the great things of butter synth is that you have a lot of choice in terms of modulation. So for example, let's activate the filter here. And down here, you have this section here for filter, filter A, filter B. You can adjust the cutoff, resonance, drive, and volume. And then of course, you can choose the type of filter here from analog, digital, and comb, etc. So it's really nice. And if you click here, for example, and hold on the cutoff, you can decide how to modulate that cutoff. For example, you can say select LF01. Now you hear the modulation on cutoff. If you want to have some visual, click here on where you have this cog symbol, and then where is scroll to the bottom, it says visualize automation. Click on it and turn it on. And now when you play, you see the modulation here active as well. Really, really nice. Click on it again and hold. And then of course, you can choose a different one as you prefer. Okay. Continuing, you can um, choose to use a sample player. Again, you turn it on, you can see here, um, a sample loaded, you can browse here, and then you can go to, for example, you open file up, you can choose, for example, some files at your um, leisure. In this case, I select a little drum loop, but I could select something else. Click on browse again, and you can choose, for example, something that you previously loaded. You can see again here access to the filters. You have four type of envelopes, which you see here on the right hand side. So you can decide that uh, the sample player is um, as the first envelope for the amplitude or the, is goes for the second one, etc. And then when you select the envelope you want to use, you can adjust the ADSR here, attack the case sustain and release, and you can do that for each envelope. Okay. <music> release so let go the key and of course you have a release so really really nice and then of course you have a unison option up to seven voices and then you can adjust the detuning the steady width the phase uh, differences between the voices and also the mix really really nice you can also solo each one of those um engine or oscillator click on the s here and then you have two way tables so we just go through one and the other one is exactly the same here you can go left and right to choose different type of way table or you can click browse and then of course you can select to one you, it has also its own editor, which I will show you in another tutorial with a lot of different options. So really, really clever synth. And it, it works with 256 frames, really nice. As the synth, it has 16 uh, polyphony. Again, if you go to the cog here, uh, there is an option here which says polyphony limit, and uh, it starts with eight, but you can ch change that to a maximum of eight. Uh, um, 16 and up here if you scroll up to the top you can also have selection for over simply for all the different oscillator really really great as you can see here you can again select the weight table position here the phase as well you can decide if to activate filters in parallel or series the envelope you choose to use unison again refining by octa semitone and sense and also you can reduce the harmonics as well which is really nice so let's uh, um go for something complex see what this sounds like <laughs> reduce it practically to a sine wave really nice and then again here you have phase modulation you can choose also here 
the source, which is really nice. And what you can also do is you can use the second wave table on F frequency modulation of FMX as well. So you can use the other wave table for FM synthesis for phase modulation, which is really nice. You can do wave folding here and you can choose also the type by sample or smooth, kind of just the pan and the volume. So lots and lots of different options. And also, it, is a, it has a noise generator. So click here to activate, you have white and pink. And again, you can apply filter. Like so, the envelope. And here you have DJ, low pass and high pass filter. Your pan. Double click to reset and of course your volume. The pink is a little bit has a little bit more boost. And you can combine each one of those as you like. Of course, the more oscillator that you have working together, the more CPU intensive it will be. So just pay attention to that. Down here you have the selection for portamento and legato, and also to have the portamento always on the first note. You have a master volume, you can set it to mono, and also you have a temp your tempo here, which you can use, for example, for your, your arpeggiato. You have a keyboard down here, unless you, of course you use an external MIDI keyboard, and then you have the usual control to hold the note, octave up and down, and then your um, pitch bend here, and of course your modulation wheel. Moving up to the top, you have uh, this first tab, the oscillator. You have select selection of presets here. Previous one, next one, click on the preset here. Then you can choose by category, libraries, uh, further categorization here, and the preset name down here. And of course, you can also save a preset here. You can adjust also some setting. This is really nice because it gives you the CPU utilization, the version. You can do some MIDI mappings, but here you can choose also key zone editor. So you can say that the granulator works from this key to another key where you click and then press a note and you decide that and then you activate it like so. And you can decide if the effect goes through uh, that or not as well. So really, really nice. Additionally, you have a matrix here and you have 32 location for um, modulation purposes. You can see the first one which has been established, LFO1, which as a source, which goes into destination filter, a cutoff, okay? And then of course you can also click on it and change that and remove it like so. So, and um, in the case you remove the modulation. You can set the minimum and maximum for the modulation and also the amount, okay? Which is really great. And as I said, you, you can do it for 32 different type of modulation location. You have a control screen, you have an XY pad, which is really nice because it also have a recording function here and you have re-triggering as well, which can be global or based on different option. Again, I will show you that in other tutorial, you could set the direction and the speed as well. So if I was to click record and I move something like that, then it will actually then um, start to uh, um, play as well. Now, um, if you go to the metrics here, what it says um, uh, on the source, you can scroll down at the bottom here, you can choose X, Y, pad, point A, and you can say that this actually is changing, for example, filter A cutoff, and then you can go to the next one, and then, for example, you can choose X, Y, pad, point B, and you can say is going to, for example, the filter and A resonance. And in that case, you establish what uh, what happens as you move from the uh, this point A to this point B, and of course, you have also other two points down here, okay? Now, uh, let's uh, uh, enable some FM. Let's ensure that the filter is going through the filter. And as you can see, it has recorded and it is moving now. And of course, you can set it to live and then you do it yourself. Here you have a fantastic arpeggiator and you can establish the sequence, the length, the gate, the velocity, transposition, 
up and down and division as well. Um, and then you can establish the play order. And if you if you want to transpose it up and down the rate, if you want it to free round, you have gate, swing, and octave as well. And it's very simple. You just click here on the notes that you want to um, override from the standard arpeggiator. So it's an arpeggiator with a sequencer as well. If you click on this icon here, you can actually zoom in and then for a better detailing. And then, it, of course, you can click on close. They can change the pattern length here as well, which is 16th. And then here you have selection uh, for your LFO, the shape, the triggering option, the speed, and also you have four macro dials, really nice. And then here you have your curve envelope, which uh, you can use to replace the traditional envelope. Again, you can zoom out and define your own uh, curve envelope, and I will show that in another tutorial. And you can also have a four-step sequencer, which you can define down here, and of course you can uh, adjust the... Um, direction here as well. You have option for retriggering, the usual option really, free running, moving between the different steps, the rate, start and position, the delay at the start and the loop length as well. So lots of options. Finally, you also have a rack of effects. And as you can see, you can scroll here and you have loads. So you can click and hold on reverb, drag down to the bottom, it will add that reverb rack. And of course, you can turn them off and you can change also the position. Okay, like so. So you have lots of different effects that you can stack together. As I said, there is much more to go through and, uh, and we will cover that in a further tutorial that will come soon. But now let's enjoy some more presets.
Okay, great. See you at the next tutorial. Bye.